then one to the top, uh, specifically telling us about the road to the SA BRICS Youth Association and BRICS Chamber of Commerce and Industry uh, for young leaders. And therefore, before we start, uh, Brother Nyangi, I will ask us to bow our heads and then sit under the Mastandas. A Camillo is a Camillo Nyana and a Secamillo Moy in my chick on the new windows on Kesia Bulena, Mantlo Glunga, Bahunachi, Gobus, Domanja, Wanga Chico, Lom Sevens, Wakos, Avanza, Gapa, and the Kutuan Bue, who put him up at the Amen. 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 Um, Putty. Uh, yes, as, as, as the topic says on itself, that hard work and determination can propel one to the top. Um, can you please tell us about your road uh, to South African BRICS uh, Youth Association and BRICS uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industry, young leaders? Uh, tell us, Ubuti, Ubuti, Kuputbani, Usukapi, and how was life uh, growing up? And then we can move forward with the conversation today. Um, thank you, thank you, Chair. Ikama Tingu Pasika Petrik Nyangiwe. Okay, Fago Takile, Shabang Bend, Matakun, Mushin. I am from a uh, town called Nalene in the Eastern Cape. Um, the town is in the is in the district of Ortambo, under Ward Thirty. Um, I am born of a family, of a royal family. One, let me start there. Yes. Um, okay. <clears throat> now, which at some point, unfortunately, born in a very disadvantaged house within our family where for example not for example where our mother to survive because my father biologically i was i, I i'm born I, I i regard myself as someone who've got two parents two fathers okay. two mothers um okay. reason for that i am born by the late Ufigi Le Nyangiwe and Nopumzi Le Nyangiwe in Tumbiagwan Chan. And then I grew up with Umbule Lomweke, with the late Nomba Samweke, due to the situation where our parents, they had seven kids and uh, with less financial resources to support those seven kids. So fortunately at the time I had to move and live with a family, not a different family, but the same family within our clan, where I grew up, where I studied up until I was studying grade eight, standard six at the time, where there were conflicts, very serious ones, where at some point I had to be frustrated in a way because my elder brother at the time left school. She, he was doing he was doing grade eleven when I was okay. doing grade C, grade eight, and then he left school and he was living with my mother and my father, and that was after the passing of our father. <clears throat> May so rest in peace. And then at the time. When that conflict happened within our family, I had to find a balance and of which I could not find at the time because I was seeing that now I have to choose because not my mother, but the people who are born from my father's side are choosing that um, these other ones, they are... <laughs> in a way of turning me against them, not to understand who my parents are and a lot of things that were happening, but yeah, that happened. And then at some point I associated myself. There was, there was a guy, of these guys, okay. like they were making serious noise. And then we liked, we loved to go there. 
And then I liked one guy who kept on playing a keyboard and all those things. And then I was like, okay. So I asked him to teach me this thing because when I was asking him, he was saying he's making, he's getting paid for doing that. So I okay. saw an opportunity for me to say, you know what? Then maybe I can be able to go to school, push myself and not because our father passed away and there is no other way to continue with our studies. Because one thing I had, I had a dream to say, I want to see myself here while I'm coming from a family that is so dark within our family, but I want to see myself growing up, getting things that my father didn't get so that we are not defined by the former or the past experiences and circumstances of our family, which we don't have control over, but to try to change the current situation and to prefer to prepare for a better future at the end of the day. So within that, when I was growing up with the other family that I grew up with, we go to school um, on Thursday, <laughs> and no school for you because you come back at Dipini at around 12 and going to school at that time is fruitless because we just know that the school is not, there is nothing that we are going to do. And then at times, so that you, 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 so that you, 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 sport, you, see, in front, so that you, 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 out of these seven villages, you have to find a way to see that this is how is this going to be done and all that. And then at the time, we're very mischievous because So next to it, we had the ENC, and then it was very hard to do while there is food next to us while we are hungry at night. So those were mischief, mischievous things that we used to do where, yeah. So at times, you know, you are not going to eat because the kushas pelelanga. You are not going to sleep inside because the komas pelelanga and you end up knowing you know what, because it's better. So we just sleep there. Yes, yes. Yeah. You wake up in the morning and you know you have a school and you have to look for those things. Yes, yes. You wake up in the morning, you know you must go and look for those things. So, so that was life growing up. And then when I was doing, I did my grade eight, my grade seven, my grade nine, standard seven, putting myself at school because I managed to be able to play the keyboard. Where at some point, where at some point I got myself involved too much going to church to play keyboard so that I get money and I put mm. myself to school. And of which where I grew up, um, we're going to different churches, yeah, things like that. And then mm. now having to go through that and the, you see things, you get exposed yourself, they do things, you laugh, you accuse, how was alone, they are doing this, what's happening and all that, but it's not the subject. Then now things like that. And then, but one thing that I had was, I can't because I was like within me one time I want to have my own family and okay. I can't subject my own family to the past experiences of how I grew up. I don't want okay. my kids to grow up the way I did. I don't want my like their siblings to grow up the way, to grow up the way I did something must be changed, the things and all those things. They must end within our generation, not to go further to our kids anyway. So those were things that pushed me to say, this is what I want to do. One day, my mother must not live in where you take sticks, you put them, so that the house is there, so that people can live in that house. Anyway, we're born in that house. 
My mother, when she got married, was because at that time, fancy and all that. That house was there. And then that house is still there today. And uh, we are trying to take it down. But our mother doesn't want that because she says that is heritage, it's history. And uh, an unfortunate part, she can't even write her name. So that's okay. how disadvantaged she was because she never went to school in many okay. cases. So yeah, so we pushed on, then went to high school, continued with the life of playing a keyboard so that you put yourself, I started at Demanda Senior Secondary School, my grade, um, grade 10, which is standard eight. And then I left <laughs> because I was finding difficult to study while on Thursday, there is a call, hey, there is a keyboard somewhere and you will come back Sunday. And then at times, ish, um, I don't know whether to put this one, but at times you will be like, you have to go there. And some people like, it's like, we must just live by faith. We are just gonna play keyboard and see what's gonna happen with our lives and all those things. And officially that was not a good thing when I look at it, but at the time it was something to do so that you can get money to start. Then I further went to Tata Technical College where I studied and then putting myself oh. to school Paying Mali as a hostel and all that, Tibana Nabefundi, taking advantage of you because you you opened that this is how this is why you are doing this. This is how your family is, this is how you grew up. And then now uh, a certain okay. pastor say, a certain pastor says, you know what? Our church is going to take care of your studies. Just play keep In terms of it. We're mm, gonna take mm, care mm, of your studies, family. we pay your school fees mm. and all that. And then when what you must do, just play keyboard at our church. And then fine, mm. at that time I was doing grade 11, that was 2006. And then fine, I, I didn't see any problem. I saw an easy way out because I was like, I'm gonna be focused playing keyboard in this church on a Sunday, they are paying my fees, I'm studying, I'm going to this church, playing their keyboard and all that. And 2207, January, we're supposed okay. to reach grade 12. My fees are not mm. paid. <laughs> My fees are not yes, paid. By the same people who promised you. By the same people who promised. And then um, mm. the question is, how is it possible? And then the pastor says, you must go mm. that my school fees for 2206 grade 11 so that mm. so that so that apart, and from, the, apart from the initial agreement of we pay your fees you play keep to our church and all that and then unfortunately mm. I moved out of hostel at the time because mm. they said there is no use for you to stay a hostel. We will be you will when when he takes his kids to to the private school that they were studying at, they will just pa pass by and drop me at the school. And unfortunately, the pastor was a chairperson of the SGP because he was taking care of my studies and then he was representing me and being appointed as a chairperson. Through the record that the, 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 the teachers and the community of Umtata Tech, they knew me, this guy, at least someone on Embeko and all that. And he, yeah, there was the end on Embeko. Okay. But at that time, I was still okay. where you just like, which even now is still very hard for me when someone is asking something and I see that this person need this thing. And then I would say, no, I can't, I can't just ignore that. So that was the thing. Now okay. we move to that. Okay, can I please, can, and I, then, please can, I, can I please ask, how was uh, uh, balancing the two, balancing you playing the keyboard and, 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 and school at the very same time. How was that uh, working uh, towards 
you because I, I remember you said earlier that you wanted to create a future that you'll be able to enable mm -hmm. everyone around you later on because you've mentioned the fact that his surroundings was not that conducive tell us from grade 11 was born in your situation how was uh, studies affected by that from grade 11 when the when the when 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 this thing came in to say we will pay your fees that stress of me that each and every weekend I must be going out and playing because when I was doing that, that on a Friday or on a Thursday, I must be going to this particular church, play keyboard and come back Sunday. And then I'm behind with my schools and all those things. It was a very bad thing because like especially when I was doing grade 10, because I would see my results that hey, as a fun is because at the time I'm supposed to study, and I'm busy, stressed out with Indo 80, I need to find money so that I can be able to eat, so that I can be able to pay my fees, so that I study because I wanted to push a dream that I don't, I didn't know at the time that way is it going to take me. But one thing I said is that at the end of the day, this dream that I do not know yet is going to take me somewhere where my family is not gonna be the same family that and is the way you So that was the thing. So in grade 11, when like 2006, when this thing happened, I was like, oh, thank God. Because for me now, that I will be stressed free, stress free. I'm focusing in this one particular church to play keyboard. I'm playing keyboard on a Sunday. At the time of school, I'm at school and doing these things. Then I was say I was like, my life is becoming to be stable now because I can be able to study and do all my school things and all that. But of which, at the same time, the life of no of being dog tea. Oh, this weekend, where am I gonna play? I don't know. I even received any call. And then now you look at the date. Hey, hostel is a funny malia order. And it's how much, and the East Coast of Punimalia, so the fees, and this is how much, and how are you gonna get that? Because I can't even call my mother to say, hey, and normally a school, or I need to phone the pub and the Kulele school. Because of the issues that happened the time after the passing of my father and all that. And then now, <clears throat> that was the thing. And then, yeah, that's how it was because playing keyboard and going to school, you knowing oh. that each and every weekend, it was very hard and it was making you unstable not to know what you must do exactly because you are Silele Skolweni because you want to get this and so Silele Skolweni and all those things. So that was okay. the problem. And it was a very stressful thing to go through anyway. Okay, okay. Now, Kengo, we are, we are past in metric. Uh, tell us through uh, the change of environment and who was funding you from Eslalin and Malin. Eslalin, Umto as Wayo, Chevom Donem Beck, as you described yourself. Tell us in Naku Fiki University for the first time and the reality. Yakalia Vendoba. Now, Unyanakanyangi is going to. Uh, start to propel into what he wanted to be. Mm. Uh, 208, I passed my mm. metric 207. Mm. By the way, I was very sick. <laughs> if what was happening, I don't know. Yeah. And then 208, I looked for a job, couldn't find any. 209, I went to school. I applied in January. Government. What is that? If we don't lay <laughs> if we don't lay it's something like what I don't know what how am I gonna say it is, but in government, that's what I want to study. And I saw there is something called local government finance. And then at the time, fine. 209, um, went to school, struggled, met social workers, 
very friendly social worker, the singer Umamu Kanyisa from Umtanzani, who was dealing with my case. They would arrange food parcels while I'm at school because I can't, I'm in the middle of nowhere, East London. And then in September, I got really sick. Mm. Where the doctors in Sicilia Makiwane, they suspected many things to even suspect that you, we might think that you are getting at a very early stage of having e kidneys and all kidney failure and all that because of the pain that was very severe, which, which was I, which I was describing to them that this pain is in this particular part of the body. And at times, even my head, I could not, I would go look down. And if I want to go, I want to look up, I must move my head in a, this, either this direction or this direction, because I can't just pull my head up because I'm gonna yeah. fall. And then yeah. that was the thing. And we didn't know what was happening and all that. And then exams were about to start. And then we had to study. Two of my modules were already written. While I'm busy nursing my pain and all that, I wrote some, I failed those two. That was yeah. 2209. 2010 oh. went back to continue doing my second and my first year in local government finance. Fortunately, I got involved one thing that we formed, which we called it South African Public Administration Student Association, which was SAPASA. And then at, in, within that, we had meetings with these lecturers from Mtata and we met a lecturer, very nice guy, but not a very nice guy, but a very nice guy <laughs> uh, called <What> Mr. Kiwan. <laughs> mm. No, he's a very nice guy when you want him to be nice, but when you want him not to be nice, you must do something that he doesn't like being lazy okay. and all those things. So okay. I met with him and then he was like, the way you speak of a policy issue it's like someone one of my students who was doing public administration and then i got interest what is public administration and then yeah. he gave me the back like in detail and all that and then i was yeah. like this is the course i wanted to do okay and then he asked what are you doing i'm doing local government finance so i was like oh that is a module in our degree <laughs> and then <laughs> and then things like that and then i took a decision to say you know what let me go start in umtata and then i mm. started there i started my first year 2011 in public administration in april i mean may in march not in april in march we were going to write psychology uh, Mr. Okay. Kotoi. Okay. i got a call from a police station Mm. Eti, the call says, um, you have a sister who is so and so, mm. who lives in Tembisa in Johannesburg. Mm. We got your contacts when we were searching for a family relative for the, to the person. It's unfortunate that she has passed away in Johannesburg. Mm. And I was like, the last time I saw my sister, she was going to East London. Mm. That was at the time that I was told that she passed away, that was six years. And mm. we never heard from her since then. Mm. And then my mind was messed up and went up and down and not knowing what exactly to say and all that. But having in mind that then now it means this thing must go home. I must go home and report this. And we must mm. find a way to go there and see your check Isha, what's happening. And unfortunately, one person says, mm. when I was in university, when I was in university, go and look for your sister, find money where you found money to go and study. And I'm like, I'm using NSFAS. 
They don't even no. understand what NSFAS is because it's money that is paying your school fees at the university where yeah. some of us yeah. never even afforded yeah. to do that. So I had to make plans and then people tried to assist there and there. I managed to go to Jobek. One good guy said, we will arrange an undertaker when you finally find your boy, sister's body and you know what's happening and all that. Mm. Then we went, we went on. I went on to, for the first time in Johannesburg. Okay. I spoke with this guy who at the time was someone who was dating my sister, whom when I mm. arrived in Johannesburg in Tembisa, he introduced himself as a husband to my sister. Okay. And then how did you guys get married? Because we never heard of this thing. Then he says, no, there was someone who was called like your name and all that who was witnessing. It was that me. Then he says, no, it was not. But your sister said that. And then I said, my sister loved money. But one thing that she was never, she was never a liar. Yes, that's she right. She would never lie that this is your family while it's not. She could not mm. do that. So then went on to Ukfanisa Umzimba. Then fine, yeah, this is my sister. And then how did he pass away? And then the guy, your sister gave birth in February. And then after that, she felt some pains and then said, you must go to a hospital. He went, she went to the clinic, then she came back, not attended. And then I promised that she will go to a private doctor. Then when we woke up, she was no longer alive. Oh, I'm so yeah. sorry. So now, so now someone like, so you are her husband. And then he says, yes. And then this thing is like this, how, is, how did it happen this way? Because I'm very confused. There are, there are stretches, there are fingers in her neck and of which you are calling this a natural death and all that. And then those things, and then fine, we moved on to that went on to where they stayed. The landlord is demanding me to pay money to cleanse his house. And then I'm saying, mm -hmm. he's her husband, so he should take he should take care of that. The mortuary is demanding I me I can't, to- I can't hear you, you are breaking now. Uh, now I'm still breaking. Okay, you are fine now. Um, uh, okay. Now can 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 okay can can we please fast track because now uh, what what I'm looking at I'm looking at the fact that we we need to get into the road to mm. to South African Brits Youth uh, Association so that we we can we can expand more there so that we yeah. we, we we can keep, yes 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 and then I, I and then I left school 2011 went back okay. to school 2014 to continue with my studies and then mm. 2016 i finished my degree public administration 2017 mm -hmm. i started my honors i got myself involved in these development structures because i had a passion i have that passion of being involved as one of the policy analysts that will ever have in the country in the scope of public administration and government. And, the, and then I got myself through these debates and all these things about the status of our democracy, our government, the, the multinational mm -hmm. relations between countries and all that, which that was true. The presentation we used to do when we're doing political sciences within our public administration degree and all that. So yeah. 2018, I happened to be part of the people who were gonna go to Russia. Okay. I got sick, I didn't go. Mm. And then I went to Pakistan okay. in November. And then I started there in a summit that had a topic about culture, 
peace and inclusive society. Where okay. We were five in South Africa. Okay. I was one who was tasked with presenting. Okay. I did my presentation on the inclusive society and which was, which went good. And then I saw something to say. So when you interact with these people from different countries, mm -hmm. we get to a level of understanding how they do things. And mm -hmm. at some point mm -hmm. you fall in love with something to say, you must build relationships with these people so that what development okay. they have, how do you bring it to your country? How do you help your community? Because one principle that I have, whatever that you want us to do, but if it does not promote community development, community empowerment, women empowerment, youth empowerment, and all those things, and helping the, the poor, closing the gap within our societies that are so disadvantaged in whatever that is happening in the world that is benefiting them intellectually, financially, socially, and economically. If it does not benefit them, them then please don't include me to that because I do yeah. not subscribe to that. So yes, yes, yes. I happened to get into Pretoria 2019, worked there, then got myself involved with these guys, seeing things like I liked reading things that are involving young people in the developmental, okay. in the sustainable developmental goals and all those things. I happened to attend my second international summit with the South African BRICS Youth Association. And then okay. I attended that. And then after attending it, I liked the idea and the, 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 the vision of the association. Okay. And of which when I was like, I liked it, it was, it was not far from my nonprofit organization that I started in 2014, which was looking at bringing education to the poor schools, trying to assist where in 2014, we managed to help one junior school in Bandingville where we donated uniform to around 50 learners at the time, okay. where it was like, when someone is in need, if you have something that you can do, do it so that you can be able to make a change to that person's life as little as you can, but it makes a change that the person will say, I am here today because of one, two, three. So I grew up in trying to say, <clears throat> when you look at poor schools, these things are not happening to them. These things are not happening to them and it's becoming a problem because you've got to go to a university where us from public schools, we only get to know computer when we get to varsity. At our second year, and our third year levels, as compared to the private school people, model Cs, whom they get to know computer from their grade R. And then it was like, so this thing, when you have a country and the world that is moving to the, indust to the industrialized revolution based on technology, digitalization and all these things, how, how do you impact your communities? How do you get involved in, with these developed countries and try to engage with them so that you can be able to take these to your community you people, the people that are from your community, so that these things are not far from them. And how do you move to that? As much as you are trying to get up and up and up, but don't go there alone. Try to bring your people and bring the development to them. Try to see a way that these people, as much as they are sitting at homes, because for example, in my community, one painful reality, the people I grew up with, playing soccer with them, playing handball with them at junior school, and playing softball and baseball with them. We were like, now they are busy every, every day when you go home, but the tavern, mm, there is nothing that they are doing and all those things. And you feel the pain that these guys, they need something and they can't get it because 
they don't know where to get it because their dreams, there was like, our dreams have shattered in our eyes. We can't move anywhere because we never had the drive. We had the drive, but we didn't have someone to take us there or someone to show us how to get there. So now being part of these structures for me, in a way, when it started with my own organization, Back to Basics Foundation, was mm. to say, let's bring this to these young ones. Okay. Because the late Nelson Mandela, first, first democratic president of South Africa, said the youth is the future. And NYTA, they adopted that, that our youth, our future. Now, technologically, educationally, they economically, they don't know these things. How do you then have the future, the future there? Because that youth is doomed because they know nothing. They don't know how to, innov how to invent things. They don't know how to come up with innovative ideas. They have skills, but they don't know how they can polish up those skills and all those things. Mm -hmm. So now by trying to get to this, you engage institutions, you bring them together. I can't I say, let's go to this key. Sorry, Pasika. And tell them what you guys offer. How can you? Yes. Pas Pasika, I see, it, it, seems, it seems like you are cutting somewhere somehow. You were telling us about what you offer us because we, we, we are very much interested on in what um, the SA Bricks Youth Association and the Bricks Chamber of Commerce and Industry uh, Young Leaders is about. So can, can um, I, I just didn't hear you in terms of what, what offers are there because we want to check that. And while we're checking that, the viewers at home, the young people that are watching now can be able, after this session, can sit down and say that me as Viam Kelanona, that is coming from the deep rural areas where we didn't have that opportunity, I can actually go further and get something out of this topic. Okay. Um, let, me, let me first start with um, the South African Bricks Youth Association. I got involved in the structure in the year 2020. Okay. As, as a director for policy research and policy development. Okay. Which 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 the 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 the, 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 the BRICS, the structure is a grouping of Brazil, Russia, China, India, and South Africa. Mm where you bring young people who must have a central role to play in policy formulation and implementation and in trying to pave a way forward on the things that are affecting young people within the BRICS countries and trying to identify as well on what young people are trying to accomplish and bringing ideas together and being the key stakeholders on the issues that are affecting youth and participating on those issues and engaging stakeholders that are there that are willing to assist young people, which like mm -hmm. in different societies and in different backgrounds, not to look only on one aspect, but not leaving Africa as well, because South Africa, is I would say is 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 representing the whole the whole continent in all these things because whatever that we do is to remember that the whole continent is depending on how these developments should be brought and how to move these things and how to grow economically and how to these policies because when you check all these countries South Africa in terms of the policies it's very good but in terms of the implementation that where we still struggling all those things and of which in many way one of the engagement that are still being done which is one of the things that I'm getting myself into because I joined the structure last year when I was brought in and then which you have to get you like I got myself involved with one some of the getting used to United Nations 
platforms mm. where you mm. get to engage youth from different countries, different continents on issues that are affecting youth. And then you engage and you check on how they tackle these issues that are facing the youth of your country. And you hear about their countries on how these things, how, what, how, how, uh, what, what is happening and whatever that is happening, how are they trying to solve those issues so that if those ideas you see that they can be able to be used in developing your own country's youth and releasing their potential because we've got a lot of potential within our youth but all those things that we do they always like one of the things i've noticed especially on the south african BRICS youth association is that one they don't go contrary with the national development plan that was done by South African government. And okay. they go don't go contrary with the sustainable developmental goals, which were adopted in the United Nations Assembly, and of which mm. they don't go contrary with the African Union Agenda 2063, which mm. you look mm. at developing young people and when you develop them something that is sustainable because it's very useless to do something when you know that this thing that you are doing you can't be able to to like to sustain it you can try it and you can get it but in terms of how is this going to be sustained in making a change you want to make a change and this change that you want to make how is it going to be sustainable so that you know that this thing is not done a week and then the week after is no longer there. No one knows, there is no direction and there is nothing that is being done. So now one of the things that you do, you look where you come from and then you look where you are and then you say, okay, this is where I am. And then now you ask yourself a question to say, how do I go there? And when I'm there, how do I make a change using the platform that I'm in? Because if you remember earlier on, I said to myself, anything that is not going to uplift my community. When I say my community, South African community, I don't get myself involved to that because it means it do not have the interest of the people of the Republic of South Africa at heart. Because for me, South Africa comes first, other than okay. anything. When I say South Africa comes first, the people of South Africa, because country is a country with four pillars. You must have sovereignty, territory, government, people, and the, I forgot the fifth one. I'm ashamed that I forgot the fifth one. <laughs> so now okay. all those things, now all those things, when you put them, in order for you to have those sovereignty, the territory and the, all those, you have government, you must have people. And if those people, they are not looked at, no one is taking, a, is taking care of them. No one is taking care of their interest. You will pretend to take their interest, to take care of their interest because you want to achieve something for your own. Then for me, it becomes a problem. And then of which in most of the things, all these structures, the South African Prix Association, it's a voluntary post. It's not a pay, a paying post. It's a voluntary okay. thing where you do it out of your heart because deep down you say you want to see a change in your country. You want to see something happening that is happening in China, that is happening in Brazil, that is happening in Russia, that is happening in India. So those okay. are things. And then now going to the BRICS Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Are you still there, Chair? Yes, I'm. I'm still here. I'm still. Here. I'm still listening yes. because I wanted. I wanted to check now. Now that you are saying it's a voluntary thing, and mm. uh, I understand in most cases um, when you get yourself into that, you need to have your own goals. Let's say that you spoke about implementation. You can see all of those things being done in Brazil, in Russia, in China, and India, and 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 now. What, what is it that um, in the short space of time that you've said, okay, uh, I've, I'm in now in the BRICS Chamber of Commerce uh, for young leaders. And then this is what I've achieved so far in the period uh, of one year that I've, I've, I've been in, uh, provided that there was COVID and so forth. And then also 
when you're looking at what you've achieved uh, in terms of those, uh, those uh, short-term goals, uh, what were the hurdles in terms of uh, attaining those goals? Um, on the BRICS Youth Chamber of Commerce and Industry, I got appointed this year. The one that I started okay. last year is the South African BRICS Youth Association, okay. which currently which currently I am tasked by the team to organize an AU summit, which is going to put young people together before, in terms of the planning, I can't release that information because we are still at the, at the preparatory stage where you can't disclose the logistic to say at what date and then, then that date it doesn't happen. But where you look at discussing issues that are dealing with the digital economy where we are, and then on how young people should be involved in the trade and investment. Because okay. when you speak of those things, you must get young people being part of that. And then young people being part of that, it means when you do it, don't do it alone. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. started to say, working together, we can do more. Mm -hmm. It's not about government is not the people in parliament. Government is people by the people for the people. So the people of South Africa are government on their own. So if they can't stand up and do something, Nothing, nothing is going to be done because our eyes are on the representatives, the one that we said, go and represent us in parliament, do whatever that you do. Then we take it that everything must be done by them. And then we just sit down and relax and expect nothing from our side, but expect everything from their side. But now how do you stand up and do something and try to meet because it's very nice when Hello. yes 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 i was saying yes yeah it's very nice when you've got something to say this is what you must do this is what i'm doing rep when that we took to parliament mm. how do you meet us on this one that we are doing mm. for example mm. You've got, you've got, you've got, you've got communities that have got in Amasimi that are no longer used. And then you go to a community and then you say, guys, but if we can sit down, because when you speak of South Africa in terms of agriculture, number one, mm. in the product, in the production market, but no one is taking it into that serious. We are still we are still putting it to say white people they have taken this from us, but we've got a land that is unoccupied in our areas where we can't plant them. Why can't we plant? And then we say, government, we've got this land, this land that we have, we want to do something with it. And when we do something with it, this is the achievement that we want to see on this part. But now the thing is, we are so lazy in a way to say, we just want to sit down and wait for them to do something. And that that's something, it must give us money. But if you don't stand up and you want to do something, get yourself involved with people who share the same vision with you, which I happened with these guys that I'm involved with. Because for example, when you speak of the, the Chamber of Commerce and Industry in the BRICS, where it's a platform that is made which is a global transform that involves young people to develop their nations with their dreams that they have. And in different, in different careers where you deal with education, you deal with- I'm not, I'm not sure if it's my network on my side, but I've lost you a little bit. Um, I know that uh, the networks that we use uh, can kick us. Can you please repeat that for me? Uh, I, 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 I'm saying 
I, I pray because Aish, on, on your side, you, you better use telecom, the national carrier, because I'm not struggling on my side with telecom. <laughs> I'm saying um, on the BRICS, uh, on what we, we, we said we must do, on the Chamber of Commerce Young Leaders, where you, you, you must bring young people who've got a dream of being entrepreneurs, and then okay. you try to find ways on how these dreams becomes a reality. Become reality. Mm, mm. How do you build a nation? You speak of a nation building. How do mm. you build a nation? You speak mm. of young people taking leadership role. How do you bring those young people into taking leadership role? Because one of the things that mm. we forget when we speak of leadership, we speak of leading a political party. You go to parliament, you go to government, and then you lie to yourself and say you are a leader when you are not, because you don't mm. understand the civil leadership, the civil society, where you speak of authentic leadership, you speak of responsible leadership, you speak of transparent leadership and open leadership to the people where you understand things that are there, when you understand that this thing that is done is not benefiting the people on the ground, but what you are enjoying is that I'm getting myself exposed to this. And as much as I'm getting myself exposed to this, I am benefiting A, B, and C. And the people on the ground in the civil society, they are suffering. They are getting nothing. They are getting worse each and every day instead of them being developed in the things that they were supposed to get as people of the country or in our communities. So now when you've got these structures, you try to bal find a balance where you say, you need to close a gap. You've got a, digital, a digitalized system that is coming in. You've got what we call for the industrial revolution, that there are many myths and facts between too many people whom some are saying, no, technology is going to mess up things and all that, which at some point we are not giving it the benefit to say, how does this technology work? No, once we get technology, people are going to lose their job. How do you get yourself involved in the technological sector so that you understand this thing, how it works? And when you find it, how it works, how do you use it to empower your community, to empower yourself as well, so that you know that this thing is not here to replace anything, but it's here to develop me, to uplift my community, to ups, to reskill my mind to what I think I know about technology, because technology is not about you being able to type in a computer, Word document, you can do a CV. That is not technological, it's literacy. Now, okay. people who think that because I understand literacy, then I understand technology. No, you don't. Understanding how to use WhatsApp, that is not being technologically advanced, but how do you use these things? You've got what you call Internet of Things. You've got devices that are intertwined, that are interconnected to each other, where you can just say something on the device and then something is happening on the other side. And of which that thing needs someone to understand it. And then when you sit down and you say, no, these structures are for people who are so well advanced, people who are in the leadership and all that. And I was like, but I'm, I'm neither one of those. I'm from a very poor community, very poor family, but here I've managed to get myself to these parts. And then when I've managed to get myself to these parts, how then can we engage these countries and the team at large to say, guys, our communities, they need us. And as much they need us, they need this development to be done to them. And then if this development is not done to our people, then it means the purpose of our existence as these structures is just in vain because there is nothing that is benefiting them. We are just sitting and enjoying being called, ah, Pasika is a member of a steering committee for the BRICS Youth Chamber of Commerce and Industry and all that. And then how do you do these things that are going to benefit your community? You do not know. Then get out of the car because you can't drive it. You've got the key, but you don't know how to put the key and start the car and keep it moving. And then all those things. So those are things that we have that you say, when you don't have young people who are so entrepreneurial, 
passionate about the things that they want to do. You don't know how to move on those things. But if you have those people and you say, guys, we can come together. Let's put this thing together. Let's try to find a way to bring our people to a way where they will be developed economically. Because the problem is we might, as ha we might have as much freedom as we say in the constitution and claim to have that. But the freedom that is a true freedom that we need is an economic freedom. Oh, the chairperson is gone. No, you can continue, but you can continue. He oh. has been uh, disconnected. And then, and then those things, and then you need to where uh, you say, how do we do this? And then how do we use the platforms that we have to benefit our people? So those are things that we, we, we try to bring on and not doing those things alone, but to do those things with the well-developed countries, like for example, China, which is now considered as the superpower economically and in terms of technology and all those things, where you have India, which is moving very far in creating many things, pharmaceutical issues, like you've got your vaccines now, which India is part of the countries that is very well advanced in doing those things. You've got Russia, that they are well advanced on what they do technologically on the renewable, renewable energy industry and all those things. So now where you say you need to try to find ways on working together with these guys to find a way, how do our countries benefit on these things? Not to depend on the coal energy because the coal energy today is that that is damaging our planet. And how do you take care of your planet? You need to find ways of engaging these ones that are already in these things. And you can't engage them when you're not part of them. You need to be part of them so that you are able to say, okay, guys, this is what must be, do, must be done. This is what we think must be done. You have people who are saying we are very far in terms of interpersonal skill, in business, in governance, and then in, in, in all these things that are developmental. And then when you see yourself that you are behind, how do you get there? Involve yourself with the people that you see that they are moving forward and then try to get those things done. Yes. Uh, Pasika, it has it has kicked me out, um, but I've I've heard what you were saying. Um, as we are concluding now, I, I would like to check, uh, Ndoba, how do you how do you engage stakeholders? And in this event, our main stakeholders is youth, uh, because I'm looking at the at the fact that it's young leaders. And how do you go and now you've mentioned the fact that you wanna go back to the roots and upskill and make sure that those people that you were working with, um, you were growing up with, are uh, currently doing something in their lives, something that will change them. How do we do that in our conclusion and make sure that all the stakeholders, all the relevant stakeholders, they do take, um, they do take a bite on this, on this big uh, pie that we are talking about. Uh, thank you very much. Um, for now, because it's very not easy to make a pronunciation when, because um, as I stated or mentioned earlier, being part of the structures, first one I joined it, part of, became part of it in 2020. Then the other one became part of it in 2021. Now, things that, for example, on the South African BRICS Youth Association, where you are tasked to organize the summit for African people. Now, on that, you need to put in the people that are in government so that they will be able to hear what young people are saying and that are facing and you hear what they plan 
that must be done. And when they do that, they don't only also speak about, because speaking is very cheap, but doing is very expensive. It's a very rare thing to see happening. And we can't be, excuse me, we can't be living into that theory of saying and saying and saying and saying and not doing. When you do things, the culture that I liked when I saw it in the South African Youth, Briggs Youth Association is when you are tasked to do something, you are given a time frame mm. that at this time, we need report of this. If there is a challenge, where is the challenge? How do mm. we tackle the challenge so that we are able to achieve A? Mm, mm, and when mm. we are able to achieve A, it means we are going to say, this is done. Then let's mm. move to the second step. Mm. And then the same thing also on the second step. And then now it means you need to get yourself involved with people that understand how this thing will be done. And when you are not able to do it, how do you get involved with people that can be able to take it there. Because at some point you can have an idea and not being able to take the idea forward. But if you have surrounded yourself with people that can be able to say, this is how this idea will be taken forward, then you are able to do something and that can be able to help a lot. And when that is done, you take the negativity out because the thing that we have, and it's becoming a disease, a very serious one. And now people will be like, we wish to do this thing, but it's going to benefit A mm -hmm. and B. Why can't you stand up and try to do something and own the idea and be proud of owning it and move with it and say, this is what I'm doing. This is what I need from you. And you keep on knocking. Because for example, myself, there is nothing that I sat down and then came to me. I kept on knocking and kicking, knocking and kicking, knocking and kicking up until I see that the knock and the kick that I'm giving is being heard. And when it's being heard, you are trying to move to a direction where you say, guys, this must be done this way. Let's do this. Let's do this so that we are able to achieve this thing. People in our government and parliament are doing things that we don't know, throwing things to each other, insulting each other and all those things. And we are busy taking that as a comedy show as young people, instead of sitting down and say, <clears throat> how do we develop our community? And how do we make sure that our communities are served and our communities are getting something? Government is busy saying on agriculture issues, here is what we can do as government to assist because agriculture is moving to the direction of being a future of our country, technology being future of our country. And then now, Tina, what we do, we sit down. No, man, agriculture, it means if you bangu mlimi, yo tini. Ambofu ya nengomo. And ukaya nengomo zaako, and you sell meat, and you, like, you start in your community, try in your community to deal with these things, to say, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm offering, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm offering. And you'll see people buying your thing and when they are not buying to the shop, because at the shop you buy a meat that is less of like, it has a day that must be used within three days. How do you buy it? A, like a bulk of a meat and a piece is eaten and then you're expected to eat that within two days. No, you can't, but you've mm -hmm. got, you've got a farmed meat by an African who is not lazy to sit down. You slaughter your cow, you slaughter your sheep. You know how these things, Emakaya Inyama used to stay for days, Ingaboli, nothing, because it's fresh. I forgot 
zifrigini, ya fagwa, zi, ya fagwa, ndo, zi chemical, zi, what, 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 what. And people were healthy when those things happening and all those things. Why can't we do that? Why did we have to go to a route where we undermined how our, 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 our forefathers were doing things? They never got sick. They were eating these things. They were planting these things. But today we say, we'd rather move and stay in, in suburbs and do nothing but be on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Look for women on Tinder whatever social media platform that is there. <laughs> but the thing that is very core, that can be able to help us, you left it at your home. Because you have no interest to sell this up, up. Busy with the iPhone, I've got Samsung, I've got the latest version of Huawei, and all these, Samsung, like all, all these phones, these fancy things, you've got people like these gadgets, gadgets. and then these gadgets that we have, we don't use them to innovate things, but we use them to say, I'm going to laugh at this one. I'm going to be going to this media platform. I'm going to be laughing at jokes being done there. And then all these things. And then you are spending money buying data that you are using to laugh. At the end of yeah. the day, you come back complaining to say government is not doing something. But why are you not doing something with the data that you have? Research and look, how can you change something? How can you do something? How can you do this? For example, reality that we must like, which I always feel like, I don't know how to resolve this. And it needs mm. something to be done. You go to your community in each mm. and every city in South Africa. You've got foreign people being at the center of the economy, the economy. Yes, of our yes. country. That's While our true. country is benefiting nothing from that economy. And then at the same time, we just sit and clap and do, and and do, do nothing. nothing. Mm. But mm. be able to criticize to say our government is not doing anything. Mm. Our government I... is not doing anything. What are we doing? We are ah. doing nothing but wait and but criticizing instead of standing up, do something. Stand up and you say, I want to open a, a, a cell phone repair shop. I want to open an electronic devices repair shop, but I don't know who can train me. Knock at the door and see if someone can be able to be there. Knock and say, I want to do this and then see if maybe someone can hear and connect you with someone who's able and capable of getting you to that someone who can make that dream possible for you. Those are things where we say a chamber of commerce and industry must deal with those, which is developing, upskilling young people of our country, our continent, and the world and putting them into the global engagement that will bring youth together and do these things. We can't, I can't okay. be taking okay. my phone forever to someone who's going to take that into a foreign country that is not going to benefit my country in terms of the GDP, in terms of the contribution that is bringing to my country. Why should I do that? Instead of getting <laughs> someone and train, and train those people to say, can we guys come together? Let's try to do this. Let's create centers. Let's do these things that we can be able to benefit ourselves. Young people, for example, in Flagstaff, one guy started to when I is ten and a Flagstaff born guy. When the bricks go kuake, these as were by people of other nations and people buying from those things instead of buying to the shops, which also those shops anyway are not owned by South Africans. But now when you see that young people are pushing, they push and when they push, they see that these things can be done. And now why are we gonna have the same young people? God gave us mind to think, the brains to think, why can't we use those brains? Oh, those brains are dead. Like if we are brain dead, we must just know that we are, we are a brain dead youth of our country that we can't think. And when someone is brain dead, you know that that person cannot think, cannot do anything. You're just there and you're doing nothing. 
Thanks, thanks a lot, Pasika. Siabule laga kulubuti. And and one thing that we will do getting from our end, we'll monitor you, and then at some stage we'll we'll take you into account of all the things that you've mentioned here, so that we can be able to assist our brothers and sisters that are sitting at home. We can utilize whatever knowledge that you have, and also at the very same time make use of the fourth industrial revolution that we currently have in our hands, but we are not able to utilize it. And uh, at least you've managed to do land out there. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure what the wife got in down. Okay, I'm much too short again. Go, 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 my guy. But the last thing I'm going to offer. Okay, let's not go to that. Um, Papa, you can, can you please, um, uh, close for us if we don't have any questions because, uh, see, I'm going to go to the bullet. I'm going to for everything that he is. And he has uh, said to us, and then we'll make sure that we follow up with him with all that we can and always be on his corner, plan essence, all these summits and ensure that he spoke about implementation. We check implementation here, Kevin Jani. How is it assisting the young people from H HDSA and so forth and so forth? Napai? Okay, in, in, in the absence of Unapai and Gena's questions, Masi Tanda Zeputi Nyangiwe, Camillo is in the Runya Nelomo in Well, Tito to Siabule and Alessation of Payona, Wanga Masalanati, Okoko, Commissio Lungleus Pamanta, Upe in Nico, Nabandona Bacoba Tungle, Baza, Nabandona Bacoba Fana no Pasica, Siabule and Tito with Tungen on those Peso, and Nawanga Tito with Tunga Kulisa, as long as the businesses that we hope for. And then Ufe. Uh, uh, you can switch it off from Facebook, then we continue. Okay. Um, it was very informative. 